is the 2017 Volvo V90 D4R design in passion red with 190 brake and a eight speed gearbox. This really doesn't kind of hang around and it kind of gives you that good amount of performance and eco together. It should turn around a combined up to 75 miles per gallon, but let's be honest, combined, let's expect about 52. So in this episode of Music Motors, I'm taking it all over the UK, taking it to Blackpool and back, taking it to my gigs, taking it into cities, doing everything. So let's go. Four hours. It comes in four hours. Four hours. Yeah, so this is an economy test. We're driving to Blackpool. Yes, he's in the right direction though. Well done. I knew I should have charged that GoPro battery. The GoPro may have died, but we made it to Blackpool and it is now the next day, a very sunny day. Now the purpose of this wasn't just a fuel economy test, it was also a bit of a weight bearing test. So Salva's got a gig in Blackpool. I wanted to test the fuel economy, but he had quite a lot of equipment as well. And it just ate the equipment up. It ate the miles up and at 52 miles per gallon, combined that's including driving through central london in rush hour and being stuck in traffic that's astounding for such a big car a very bottom spec d4 would come in at about thirty-seven thousand pounds uh, that would be the momentum uh, pack cover there's been an r design with some extras including privacy glass and a ridiculous amount of tech extras like Auto car pilot assist. It comes in at about £42,000. Now, I've got to compare that to the high end. This is in comparison with people like the Audi and the A6 and the BMW with their, with their 5 Series, a brand new one. But this gives you something that the others don't. Five star end cap brake, cabin so strong that it almost broke the machine that was testing it. And then technology. Let, let's look at it and be honest. Tesla and Volvo are pretty much the only two manufacturers that are going for autonomous driving. Now, that shows in this car. Today, I'm at the first Goodwood Breakfast Club of the year. A busy one, it's their biggest, and that's kind of a test in itself. It's a big event, big car park, full of lots of exotic and nice cars. How's this gonna fit in? Let's see. Not only did it get into the muddy and grassy car park with ease, but it then appeared it was more rare than a Ferrari F40. It was quite literally the only V90 there. And then when I got back to the car, there were people asking me questions about it. Pilot assist on a long drive is an absolute godsend for a multitude of reasons. Mainly being that as you get tired, you tend to wander out of your lane and it's like a really advanced lane assist. Because it pulls you back in the lane and then turns the corner for you. Now I did test it on a long run without touching the steering wheel. And every now and then you get a, miss, like a system message come up and say, you know, you've got to put your hands back on the wheel. There are ways of getting around that. But generally it did really, really well in keeping you, even on tight corners, in the lane. However, you can't rely on it and it's never made to be relied on because I've almost also put it into a curve. So the technology is there. It's definitely very good, but it could be better, and it will get better as this car is going to progress significantly over the next couple of years. The parking test, the usual, but a little bit different because this car is relatively easy to park itself. While sometimes it being a bit big can become a little bit tedious in the tighter spaces, this car has auto park, and it has really good auto park. Check it out.
Volvo have, without a doubt, nailed this car in every single feasible way. And then they've nailed it a bit more. And for 42,000 pounds on the road, when you put this up against some of its competitors, this absolutely walks all over them. In more ways than one. Technology wise, this kind of really just is ahead of everyone. Even coming from the central display and how idiot proof it is to use. And the sound system, as complete standard, is so significantly better than almost any other manufacturer as standard. Comfort wise, having now done, yeah, the best part of a thousand miles, I can confirm that these seats are very comfortable. They hold you, they have lumbar support. I'm a little confused by how it does have electric seats, but they're not fully electric. But you know what? It's one less thing to break. Being partially electric means it's built really well. There's no way it's gonna break on them. And then the cabin itself. It's such a blissful place to be. It's silent, even at 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, it's completely silent. The ride is firm, but still comfortable. It doesn't break your back at all in the slightest and doesn't become tedious on a long drive. You have a good amount of space in here as well. And for rear leg room, it's, you know, not class leading, but you're talking almost seven series leg room for five series price. The auto box is responsive and easy to use. You've got a manual mode, you don't have Tiptronic paddles. Exterior styling, I think it's probably the best looking car they've ever designed to put on the road with that whole kind of shooting brake look. Everything design wise is just spectacular on this car. Even in the interior, the design is spectacular and beautiful, refined, hard wearing, and kind of, you just know where everything is. Performance wise, okay, it's 190 brake. It has front wheel drive. If you get the D5, it's 235 brake, all wheel drive. It doesn't hang around, but I, I would say that, you know, I would go for a D5 person. Just because if I've got any equipment in the back, that 190 on top of it being a fairly, you know, big and heavy car, knocks it down quite a bit, so the 235 would be needed. Now down to the very, very, very few things that annoy me about this car. When you're parking to the curb, you often use your wheels as a site of reference to A, not curb your wheels, and B, know where your position is. However, because the body kind of arches out on this, seeing the wheels is uh, impossible. It annoys me that the rear headrests will pop down. Perfect. But they won't pop back up. I almost feel like there could have been a motor mechanism for you to put them back up, and I know that's being super lazy, but the functionality is there. And very occasionally, the indicator goes out of time. Almost like an inconsistent indicator rhythm. And being a musician, you can bet I notice that as soon as it happens. The boot is such a good size that it took all my equipment with my bass in the back, and I still had room to put more in. So the gig test, it's passed with flying colours, not only on my gig, but Lord Loop Station's gig. I've done it easily, taking all the equipment, cruise the motorways. Volvo have, without any question of a doubt, made what is truly one of the best cars on the road today. From technological advances to style, which is just beyond words. And they have so much more to give and to see what they have to give, you have to look at where they've been.